Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Meanwhile, of course, new evidence uh, this morning that EU countries have begun implementing their plans for a possible hard Brexit. In a letter seen by Sky News, the Dutch government has set out the need for almost 1,000 more customs officers in the event of a no-deal Brexit. They believe at this stage that it is a conceivable outcome, blaming divisions in the Conservative Party for the lack of clarity in negotiations. Our political editor, Faisal Islam, reports. Time is now ticking on Brexit decisions made by companies, institutions and governments, not just in Britain, but for example in the Dutch port of Rotterdam. Here, they've decided they can wait no longer for what they expect to be an increase in customs exports declarations of 4.2 million, up 33 per cent, and 732,000 a year, or 18 per cent, for imports. Sky News has seen a letter from the Dutch Finance Ministry outlining why they have now started recruitment of the first of just under a thousand extra customs officers. In particular, the letter blames the divisions within the British Conservative Party and the remaining lack of clarity about British input for continuing to impede the smooth running of the negotiations. So no deal without a transitional period is still conceivable. 930 extra customs officers required under no deal and 750 even under a Canada-style deal, says the Finance Ministry letter to Dutch MPs. It's a shambolic state of affairs really when the Dutch government and Dutch MPs seem to have a better understanding of what Brexit means for trade and British businesses than our own government ministers do. Dutch politicians argue that they're preparing for the UK to leave the customs union, but have questioned that here thousands more customs officers will be required. Harwich, for example, on the route from the Hook of Holland port, has no border inspection facilities. The shipping industry thinks, though, that the Europeans are jumping the gun. I think it's far too early to start that sort of contingency planning. Um, I think there is really good solutions out there. No one's interested to have intrusive customs barriers. There's no one there is no one's interest to diminish trade whatsoever with each, each other country. So I believe that's what we should be focusing our efforts on is finding those pragmatic solutions. All of this occurs as David Davis is touring European capitals to reassure them and will today give a speech promising a race to the top on trade standards. He will say the agreement we strike will not be about how to build convergence but what to do when one of us wants to make changes to the rules and that neither side should put up unnecessary barriers during this process. As frictionless trade as possible is what the Cabinet promises, but exactly how is to be thrashed out at an away day at Chequers on Thursday. But with customs officers to be trained and facilities to be built before next March, key trading partners watching government disunity say they have no choice but to act. Faisal Islam, Sky News. Well, live to Vienna as soon as the Brexit Secretary starts delivering his speech. In the meantime, let's uh, preview it with the Conservative Vice Chair, uh, Raman Chishti MP. He voted to leave the European Union and the Labour MP for Cardiff South and Penarth, Stephen Doughty, uh, who voted uh, remain. Um, do you accept what we were just hearing there from the Dutch government that we're not ready for a hard Brexit and it is a live possibility. Well, do you know what? They said the same thing in relation to the first phase, that we would not get through that. But we got a financial well, we settlement. We have got through it. Yeah, we thought we had a deal but, on but, Ireland and we don't. No, no, but let, let, me, let, me, let me finish. But in terms of the financial settlement, there was those who said we would not reach a financial settlement. We got a financial settlement. There was those who raised con concerns about our citizens' rights. We got that. In terms of the end game on Northern Ireland, there's people said we would not be able to reach, reach an end game where we want to be. We've done that. Transition period, we've made that very clear. So I'm very confident that uh, we'll be in a very good position to move to the next stage to get the best possible trade deal and have that fair competition which is in the interest of Europe uh, our European partners and also for us they want nothing to worry about 
I mean, I, th I find that Raymond and others are living in a complete fantasy land. The reality is, is as you say, the Ireland deal is unravelling, other parts of the deal are unravelling. The Home Office, um, I'm set on the Home Affairs Committee, has been very clear where the Home Office is not ready um, to even put in the border checks and the immigration checks that are going to be required. And the chaos and disunity that we're seeing in the Cabinet, um, the complete lack of vision, we've seen these speeches containing absolutely nothing. I don't expect to hear much from David Davis today. Um, what well, shambles I this mean, government is in? Just on that, I mean, surely, from your perspective, you would welcome what he's got to say because he's uh, suggesting, as uh, the Chancellor suggested a short while ago, that there isn't going to be a uh, mass deregulation and that uh, the UK is going to stay fairly close well, to uh, European uh, well, norms. Well, I was very in intrigued to hear that because I've been to see the secret Brexit papers in the Treasury and they're very clear that even in the very sort of, you know, best scenarios, um, you require significant deregulation. And if you look at what uh, Liam Fox has said previously, what Dominic Rabb has said previously, when you look at what Boris Johnson has said it's about the social chapter, it's very clear about where they want to head. And then, of course, if you look at the extremists at the other end, Jacob Rees-Mogg and others, they have long favoured this kind of race to the bottom, uh, deregulate everything, sort of, you know, tax haven on the fringes of Europe economy, which is not what the British people want to see, nor what they voted for. Do you think, do you think that's where we are heading, towards a heavily deregulated UK? Well, look, there's always some in the Labour Party who've always tried to frustrate the process. 243 Labour MPs yeah. voted against the withdrawal yeah, process. But I was asking you about the government. But what I would say from the government point, you know, yeah. we are absolutely committed and determined to have the highest standards possible. We've seen the work done by Michael Gove on environment and animal welfare. We're looking at the citizens' rights, enhancing that. We saw the Taylor Review, which would ensure that citizens get even more rights. Um, we're looking at the financial sector. Uh, you know, I, I would say, look, we are very confident to get the best deal. Stephen but that's talks not about Stephen talks about Stephen, analysis shows. Well, the, internal analysis that Stephen talks about these are talking about these are talking about these are talking about you know uh, off the shelf uh, solutions but we're talking about a unique bespoke solution for our country which I know and I'm confident we can get but from your point of view surely there isn't much point in leaving unless there is a fairly extensive deregulation to uh, get the economy going. well look you know what we have to do is the the public voted you know I believe in democracy I believe in respecting the will of the British public you know that decision made it very clear we have to come out of the single market we have to come out of the, the Customs uh, Union. We have to have a unique relationship with our European partners. Even if, it, even if it does its economic damage. Well, look, you, know, you, you say it would do economic damage, but no, I would no, say... I you know, say that. I, I said, no, the, the he, government analysis no, is no, clear me, that it will let, do let, let economic clear, damage. Let, let, let me make it very clear. clear. If you're looking at our economy, the, 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 the situation which will do us massive economic damage if a Labour government were to come in place, but for us, manufacturing is at 10-year high. If you look at the FDIs going anywhere around uh, uh, Europe, the, the United Kingdom is best placed in having more and foreign direct investment coming in. We're we're in a best position to move forward uh, with a positive vision. Or, or on contrast, if you actually listen to what manufacturers are saying, or you listen to the CBI, or listen to Airbus, um, or you listen to Rolls-Royce, they are deeply concerned of us coming out of the customs union and the single market because of the impact it will have, let alone those issues around the Irish border, which are completely unresolved. Every single piece of that government analysis is absolutely clear that the gains in trade that we get from um, you know, new deals with the US and all this sort of fantasy scenarios it's, of other deals are completely, are completely Steve, offset by the losses Completely offset by the losses. Ninety percent of increase in trade will be if outside you put a, of the European if you, Union. It's if you a look fantasy. at 2010, it's a complete fantasy. since 2010, if you're looking at our export to Europe, it's increased by 10 percent. To the United States, yeah, it's gone by 40 percent. We're still in the to single the market East, in the customs Saudi's union, Raymond. We're still, we're still we are in. in a great we haven't, put the, we haven't put those barriers up. The minute we start, 99 percent of trade going through Dover port is with our EU partners. Uh, look at Welsh ports with with Ireland. We already see a new hmm. ferry route being set up between Spain and and Cork. Um, just in the last few weeks to avoid the UK yeah, but because I mean, of the uncertainty. You know, going back to the sort of straight banana controversy, there is still a feeling in the United Kingdom that a lot of European regulation has been burdensome and not productive and that we have the opportunity by leaving to lift that off but, our but shoulders. But that's one of those myths that's been constantly put out there. When we're talking about regulation, we're talking about rights of, uh, of mothers in pregnancy. We're talking about the Working Time Directive. We're talking about health and safety regulations. We're talking about uh, environmental standards. You know, there are plenty uh, on the Conservative benches, those extremists, who would love us to go in um, with those lower, for example, US standards, for example, on food safety, have that chlorinated chicken, have that GM food but, coming but, over but here. Stephen, that's you, where we're headed. And the government analysis that, says Stephen, it itself. Stephen, you say that, but then if you look at in practice what we're doing with animal welfare, 
in terms of our environmental stuff. You know, we're raising standards it, it, to the highest all, possible. It's all PR. And if you look at because of what rights, your ministers have actually that. said, it's no, completely different. It's a difference where you, if there's people on the Labour side who will never accept the result. You know, we accept the result. We have to move forward. And I know, you know, we can get the best deal for our country. And, and wreck the economy at the same time. Relations. No, our economy will go strength to strength. Wreck the economy for ideology. That best deal with our European partners, but respecting the will of the public and ensuring that we, we control our borders, our money and the, our laws, which the, is the, what the, the public the voted The truth for. is, Adam, is that the government are completely in hock at the moment to a group of extremists on their own benches, 30 or so, who want to lead us to this kind of, you know, fantasy land um, and ruin the economy in the short, medium and long term. And the government analysis proves that itself. And the British people have the yep. right to change their mind. That is not what they were sold during the referendum. But the problem is that, is that the opposition is not offering them that clear choice, is it? It well, is not I, the official I, policy of the Labour Party to do what you I, would I, like. Well, I was with Keir Starmer just this weekend and I listened to him make two excellent speeches in, in Cardiff alongside the likes of Airbus, alongside um, Karen Jones, the First Minister of Wales. He's been very, very clear on this and he was absolutely clear that we keep the option of the single market, the customs union on the table. You know, I, I want us just to, you know, commit 100% to doing you think that. You're going to? Um, but I, I certainly hope that the Labour Party is moving in that direction because when it comes down to it, on that crucial issue of Ireland, on the crucial issue of the disruption to trade that's going to be caused by putting up those customs barriers, uh, we need to look very, very carefully now. This is where the rubber hits the road. This isn't about fantasy scenarios and fantasy lands that David Davis and Theresa May are claiming. This is about reality for British businesses, jobs and our economy and, and what's best for the British people. I've been